those to track. The depth sensor gives us a point cloud that we can use to uh, find points in space. And then with the RGB camera, we can then map our uh, pixels onto each point. And with our high precision motion tracking, we can then track where those points are in space. And so you can uh, manipulate the mesh that you then create. As you walk around, as you pivot around the space, you can see the, uh, the uh, points. And we are, we've created a Unity plugin that creates a physics model of the walls and objects that game developers can then use to create applications that take advantage of the real world around the, around the user and around the device. Our motion tracking gives us the ability to do high precision navigation. And so you can walk around an indoor space, again, without relying on GPS or Wi-Fi or Bluetooth beacons, and track where you are. And we can also provide an augmented reality view by painting arrows along the floor to guide you to your destination. And then when you arrive at your destination, we can put a landmark in the, uh, in the view so you can see that you've arrived. So these are just some of the um, <coughs> Uh, capabilities that our technology provides. Using the tablet and screen capping. So what's interesting is that obviously I have the cockpit, I have analog style controls, but I can quite literally look around with the tablet as I'm engaging the game. And this is all just running on Tango. So the Tango stuff. So originally, we were, we were one of the ori original, or the first 200, I guess, developers to get our hands on one of these, the first generation Tango tablets. Um, and they were much smaller, and they didn't have the NVIDIA Tegra K1. So the frame rate was slow. It, was, it, it didn't allow us to make the game experience as good as we wanted. But as soon as we got, uh, got our hands on the latest generation stuff with the K1 processor, we were able to get a lot more uh, GP, we were able to get a lot more zombies on the screen, better explosions, the game was just running super fast. Um, and it was the first time we could have a game where it's a real game and also at the same time do the, the position tracking and the, the computer vision stuff. Uh, when you try to do all of those on an iPad or just a standard cell phone or tablet, um, you have to sacrifice game performance because it just doesn't have the dedicated hardware. Um, and a container ship full of zombies has crashed in and it's just unloading zombies Throughout the, throughout the island, and you are flying around, moving in and out. Um, you don't have to worry about swiping to aim anymore like in the original phone and tablet version of Zombie Gunship. All you need to do is just very intuitively point and shoot. Uh, and you can see that it's pretty smooth. It's not really losing tracking at all. And uh, when we had this at various conferences like Google I.O. and the Game Developers Conference, people were rolling around on the floor trying to get zombies under trees and um, clearly, there's something there as far as opportunities for getting fun experiences out of people. Now, I'll show you one more video that gives you a little more context of what's going on. That was kind of a screen grab, and now you can see the background moving and, and see that there's, there's a fair amount of motion. And this is under just ordinary room lighting conditions. It's not, not like a very laboratory uh, condition that we've created for this. It works in, in really normal conditions, it's a super playable, playable game, um, and it's the first time that I think there's a platform that is can allow you to create commercially viable products that use the 3D positional tracking for uh, the world around them uh, in a new and a different way. So when we heard about Project Tango and were invited to start working on some apps, uh, we were really excited. Uh, obviously, there have been a lot of great projects like uh, Connect OpenCV that have allowed for the creation of uh, interesting, uh, interesting experiences that use uh, more of a human interface. Um, but having this freedom to actually have a mobile device um, that lets you uh, lets you do this uh, in any environment um, was really uh, really exciting. So, the first thing that we wanted to do is get an understanding for what Project Tango has to offer. Um, so. Uh, Larry already touched on a couple of these points, but uh, you know, motion tracking gives you that understanding of where you are within a physical space. Uh, depth perception lets you uh, lets you see surfaces that are in front of you. 
Um, area learning, I do think, is something that uh, hasn't gotten a lot of love, at least in the applications that I've seen so far, but it is really great. So the idea is that you can go uh, scan, uh, scan a space uh, and save that to something called an area descriptor file um, so that you, when you revisit that space, can reload it. But you can also share that with other people. So someone could theoretically have come in and made a scan of like the convention center here. Uh, and then bundle that with an app. So uh, when you as an attendee come, um, it would have been able to tell you where room LL212A is. Uh, people to, uh, to uh, express themselves creatively. So what Sk uh, Space Sketcher ended up being uh, was a 3D drawing tool. So uh, you can take the tablet, move around a three-dimensional space, uh, draw, create lines, uh, and basically just kind of um, play uh, on a blank canvas. The next one that we created was called Soundfield. Um, so this is actually uh, an experiment that was based on uh, some research that came out of uh, UCSD in 2001. Um, there was uh, there were some researchers studying synesthesia um, who uh, basically uh, conducted an experiment. They had two line drawings. One was spiky and one was rounded. Uh, and gave participants those line drawings along with two names, Kiki and Boba, uh, and asked them to associate a name with a shape. So. Uh, they had uh, participants from diverse uh, linguistic, cultural, and physical backgrounds. Uh, and despite that, uh, within 95 to 97% uh, of, of the people, um, they called the spiky one Kiki and the round one Boba. So we basically wanted to create an experiment that would uh, allow us to explore kind of the, the ties between uh, the visio, uh, visual and, uh, and audio. So, Soundfield, uh, basically we had our, uh, some audio engineers um, create different tracks, um, each of which, which gets loaded into a 3D environment uh, and visualized uh, using the waveform uh, as these kind of orbs that are reactive to sound. Um, we built this in Unity, so we're taking advantage of the uh, baked in 3D uh, sound. So as a user actually walks through the environment, um, it's a different mix. You can hear different sounds uh, as they approach. You can hear different sounds uh, further away. So you get a, a different uh, experience as you move through. Um, one of the things that definitely jumped out at us is that this is uh, fun to move through, but the real power here is being able to uh, actually move around objects, um, change volumes, add modifiers, uh, add additional effects. Um, so the next version of this is essentially a much more robust kind of 3D audio creation and editing tool. 